Hi folks, and welcome to our final question on the final exam review that deals with stock appreciation rights. You remember for stock appreciation rights, they're a little bit different than stock options for employees because what happens here is that the executive, when they sign up for these rights, they actually, instead of getting shares, they actually wind up getting a cash value. Many times this cash value is paid out once the vesting date has, has, uh, has come up. So they usually don't wait too long after the vesting date to get that payment. Now, uh, because they're paid in cash, this is why this que I picked this question because I thought it was pretty good and then it asked some theory as well. The question asked, um, why are stock appreciation rights issued instead of common stock options? Well, one of the most important reasons is that the executive, if they want to have stock options, at the at the point in time, if they decide to exercise those options, they have to come up with, with cash based on the exercise price. You remember earlier in this chapter, we talked about that. If an executive wants to exercise their options, they have to come up with the number of shares they're going to buy when they exercise the options, which is always set up at the issue date or the grant date, as well as the exercise price is set. So the executive has to pay this exercise price per share times the number of shares they're going to buy if they decide that they're going to exercise the options. So they have to come up with the cash. Here, this is not the case. Here, it's at the end of the vesting period that the executive actually gets cash if they've been able to, you know, get the share price up uh, appreciably enough so that they can make some money on it. So this way, the manager doesn't have to come up with, or the executive doesn't have to come up with any cash. So these plans can be um, quite preferred as opposed to the stock plan. So, because again, the executive doesn't have to come up with any cash. They may actually get cash paid to them, you know, in the event that they're able to accomplish the job or meet the objectives under which that stock appreciation rate is given. So that's why we say that in many times, if we, you have a regular stock option plan, the manager may not be willing or even able to buy the shares and then sell them for cash. So the idea is, don't forget they have to come up with the money, right? So if they can't come up with the money, then they may not be able to take the shares and, and sell them if they want, right? So um, again, they might not want to borrow the money to buy the shares if they don't have liquid resources. Now, to that point, point about borrowing the money, this is just an aside, but it is an important issue because a lot of times these executives, if they're going to get involved in these option plans, stock stock option plans, instead of appreciation rights, they may negotiate an interest-free loan up front uh, with the company. They'll have to pay back the principal, but at least the interest is free. But the bottom line is they're still going to have to come up with the cash. So in any case, uh, that's one of the reasons why appreciation rights have become a little more popular in some in some companies than options. And in some companies, they offer both options and appreciation rights. So now that we've dealt with that, let's move on to the second and third requirements. They want to know for these appreciation rights how much compensation expense we're going to record for over the vesting period. The vesting period goes from years one to five. And how much we're going to show on the balance sheet in the statement of financial position uh, from years one to four, which is the first four years of the vesting period. So in order to do that, what we did here, or what I did here, is I did exactly the kind of thing that we did in, in class or what we discussed, and that's drawing up a little chart or a table to kind of guide our thinking. And how this works is this. The idea is that because we're issuing appreciation rights, we have to figure out how much we're going to expense in the income statement or the statement of earnings because Every time we incur an obligation to give an employee something, and in this case, we're going to have to give them cash at the end of five years if they meet the objectives, right, that we've set for them, we have to book an expense or a cost. So the end game here every year is to debit an expense and credit a liability account, which is going to be our liability, which is going to be uh, an estimate of the amount of cash that we're going to have to pay out at the end of the vesting period to all of the executives who are in the stock appreciation right program or plan and who remain with the company throughout the vesting period. So what we do here is we're calculating the value of the liability 
cumulatively as we move forward because as you know from your uh, introductory financial accounting studies and anything since then you know that liability accounts keep or any balance sheet account keeps rolling forward it doesn't close so therefore we're going to look at cumulatively how many years over the five-year vesting period people have been with the company those are the people who qualify and what was the retention rate so we know in our case that we had eight executives that were part of this stock appreciation rights plan and the company estimated that 75 percent of the executives would stay each and every year that was their estimate now they know that by the time they got to the end of the uh, vesting period they know that only five of the eight remained so in actuality they only retained 62 and a half percent which is five of the eight employees who originally under the plan but the company used the 75 percent estimate if you go back to the question because they believed that estimate to be more true of what the retention rate would be each and every period now what they do is they say well now that we know what our cumulative vesting fraction is going to be and again it's cumulative because we're estimating the value for a liability at the end of a period which is going to look cumulatively at how many people have stayed, right? And we know what our estimate of retention is. Now we're going to take the value of the appreciation right. So now those these rights here, you'll notice the one thing that's different from the options is the value of the right was $4 a right, $1 a right, $2 a right, $17 a right. It changes. That's because we're valuing, we're using this value to help us value the liability piece. And the liability piece has to be fair valued on the balance sheet at the end of every period for which we're doing statements. So therefore, unlike the stock option, the appreciation right has to be revalued at the end of every period so that the liability on the balance sheet is right. Now, what we did here is we multiplied the value of that right by 500,000. If you go back to your question, it says that there are 500,000 appreciation rights that it's going to pay out to its eight members. So we want to value each and every one of those appreciation rights. So we're seeing each of them is worth $4 in the first year. Okay, by the time we get there. So if we take this product of 2 million multiplied by 75% and then multiplied by 1 over 5, we're going to come up with a cumulative liability at the end of the first period of 300000 We don't have anything in the account yet. This is just our first year. So therefore, we know that we need to make a debit to compensation expense and a credit to a long-term compensation liability account in year one of 300000 So I've tried to line up the entries just below the year to which they, they correspond. So we're going to have to make an adjustment to our liability account to move it from zero to 300000 by making a $300,000 adjustment. So this amount of the adjustment is right here. Now if we go into the second year of the vesting period, cumulatively we know that we're in the second of the fifth year. 75% is still the estimate the company feels most comfortable with. And we know now that the value of the right is a dollar per right. We have 500,000 rights, so the value of the rights is 500,000. So if we take this 500,000, all we're trying to do is figure out a cumulative value for the liability by multiplying those rights by 75%, because if that's our estimate of the number of people who will be staying of those eight executives, they're not all going to get, we're not all going to pay them out any cash if they're not here throughout the entire vesting period. So the idea is only people, the 75% that are in the game for the vesting period are going to get it and we're trying to figure out the cumulative liability. So multiply it by the cumulative vesting fraction which is 2 over 5 and we're going to come up with the fact that we need to have a liability of 150,000. Well guess what? Our liability now has 300000 in it, so we're 150000 too high. So what we would wind up doing here in the second year is getting our liability to this balance by reducing the current $300,000 liability by 150000 So therefore, what we need to do is we need to take out or remove 150000 so that this is the balance we have in it. So you can see here, if this is the cumulative amount we have in the account and we only need 150000 then subtract it in order to get the amount of the liability 
adjustment. And in this case, because we only need 150 and we've got 100 and we've got 300,000, we're going to reduce the liability or debit the liability by this much. So you can see here that this is where we're debiting the liability and crediting a compensation expense account or crediting a recovery account. The expense account would be a credit balance in the statement of earnings for year 2, or you could just credit a recovery account. So now, and they're both um, income statement accounts, and they would both be in your operating um, expenses as a credit. All right. Now, if we go to year three, again, now the rights are valued at $2 a right. We've got 500,000 of them. So we know that they're worth a million dollars. That's their fair value. But again, we're not going to have to pay out a million dollars if only 75% of our people are here to date, right? And don't forget, we're not finished yet. That's just what the value is based on the fact that we've been there three years out of five. So the cumulative amount we now need in the liability account in the balance sheet is 450000 But don't forget, we only had 150000 from the previous year. So now we want to add in or top it up by dumping in another 300000 into the liability account. So we debit the expense and credit the liability for 300000 So this adjustment here is this number in here, right in here. Okay, now we're in the fourth year. Fourth year of the five-year vesting period. Again, we think 75% are staying, but now the right, each rate is worth $17. So now we have 8.5 million in rights, but again, we're not going to pay out 8.5 million if we're only anticipating 75% will stay. And guess what? Over the vesting period is four years out of five. So therefore, we know that we need a cumulative liability of $5.1 million in there. We only have 450000 That's the amount that we needed from the end of the previous period, or needed to have in there from the end of the previous period. So now that we need $5.1 million, we need to top it up by $4.65 million. So we debit the expense and credit the liability for that. Now here we are in the last year of the vesting period. So now I don't go with estimates at the end of the year because now I have to revalue my liability and pay these executives what I owe them. But don't forget, if there's anybody that's not there at the end of the final year of the vesting period, they're not going to get any cash paid to them. They have to be there. So now I notice that three of my, five, my eight guys left, so only 62.5%. Of this, 9.5 million will be paid out. And how did we get 9.5 million? Well, the question told you, if you go back, it said that the stock appreciation right or its value is calculated as the difference between the fair market value of the shares or a, a fair, the $34 per share fair market value of the 500,000 common shares on the date the appreciation right was issued. So that's what we call a reference price. That was based on the at the issue date what the share price is. So you're only going to get the difference between the share price at the date you signed on for this plan and today's share price, which at the end of the fifth year of the fifth year of the vesting period is fifty three dollars. So you're getting this difference. So you're getting nineteen dollars a share times five hundred thousand shares. And that's going to give you 9.5 million. Now, not any one person is getting it. These five guys are getting it. But don't forget, okay, um, they're not getting the full 9.5 million. Only 62.5% or five of those eight guys stayed. So the total amount of the payment that's going to go out is 5,937,500. So therefore, I have 5.1 million in it, so I now need to top it up by 837,500 before I pay these guys out their 5,937,500. So I'm going to make an entry to adjust my compens or to record my compensation expense for the period and to credit my liability. After I post this last journal entry, now I have this much in the account. So now, in requirement four, it's asking me to make the payment. So now, in requirement four, I'm going to make the payment at maturity, okay, at the end of the vesting period for the stock appreciation right. So I'm going to debit the liability, which is now sitting by the time I credited, 
credited it, debited it here, and made these three credits. It's now sitting at 5937 and then I'm going to credit cash and pay these five of the eight guys out. So that's how it works. Now, in requirement five, I'm not going to worry about that because we didn't do that in our course. But what it says, just to make you aware of the, the issue, it says here, describe how accounting for this compensation scheme would be different if the employees could choose between cash and shares at settlement. Well, if you're now, this is a different plan, but if you're going to give the employees the option to either take the cash or take the shares, that's a compound uh, instrument. So that's a compound uh, option share plan. So we don't, we don't talk about them in our course, but suffice it to say that you now have to break that up into a liability and an equity piece, much like we did with convertible debt. So it's a little bit beyond the scope of the course, but if you were interested in reading, there is a section on compound plans if you wanted to go and do that reading, but it's not a requirement of the course. So in any case, this concludes our final question on the review, which deals with stock appreciation rights. Good luck on your exam.